Hip and knee replacement surgeries are two very common uh, interventions that are done in Canada. They're very cost effective uh, medical procedures that greatly improve the quality of life. More than 75,000 Canadians per year undergo hip and knee replacements. Uh, while they're very effective, they do cost a fair bit of money. They're about $15,000 per procedure. And this represents more than a billion dollar cost uh, Canada-wide every year. And unfortunately in Canada, we do not have a good mechanism for monitoring the outcome of hip and knee replacement surgeries. We don't have a good mechanism for monitoring uh, particular implants to see if they fail early. We don't have a good mechanism for identifying poorly functioning implants and those patients who have those implants so we can call them back and do closer follow-up and assessment. If you're purchasing a car, it's very easy to get lots of good information on the, the price of the car, the quality of the car, how long you expect it to last for and all these kinds of things. Uh, when you're looking to have a hip or knee replacement, it's very difficult to get that same type of information. Uh, it's not possible to look up your surgeon's complication rate, how many of his or her patients are satisfied, how many of his or her patients have been revised within two years or within ten years. This data in most cases simply does not exist or it's not collected and analyzed and fed back to the system so we can improve things. If a manufacturer designs uh, a new hip or knee implant, um, they have to go through the regulatory process. In, the, in Canada, it's, it's Health Canada. And typically Health Canada looks at the implant uh, to make sure that it's similar in design to previous implants that have been approved. Uh, so similar design, similar materials, similar manufacturing process, similar indications. And it falls within those general guidelines and the implant is typically approved for use. So there's really not a, a rigorous independent assessment either in the laboratory, uh, by independent laboratories looking at the wear properties of the implant. Uh, there's no consistent requirements for ongoing prospective studies uh, comparing this new implant to pre-existing implants. Um, so this has led, as many examples uh, around the world, of implants being released onto the market that really haven't got, undergone adequate laboratory or clinical testing. They're implanted into thousands of people and then they're recalled. Um, we've seen this recently in Canada, in fact. So I think this process uh, of approving and assessing new implants is falling short and we need to do a better job of doing that in Canada. And certainly one way of doing that um, is to uh, fully implement the Canadian Joint Placement Registry. Uh, so this is a, a voluntary registry that's been in place uh, for about 10 years now, a little more than 10 years. And it collects data on a voluntary basis of hip and knee implants uh, that are inserted into patients at the time of surgery. And the trouble is if you don't capture all of the data, it's very difficult to monitor an implant. So for example, if I do a hip replacement, and I fill out a Canadian Joint Registry form and send it in, and my colleague revises this implant a year later, either because of my poor surgical technique or because of a bad implant design, and he doesn't fill out another Canadian Joint Registry form, then we don't know that that revision has occurred, and there's a problem either with that implant or with that surgical technique. So really, to properly assess and track implants, you need to have better than about 90 or 95% capture. And right now in Canada, we don't have that. So not only are we unable to really monitor particular implants and surgical techniques, there's really a, a lack of, of indicators assessing the quality and outcome of hip and knee replacement surgery. When you look at the costs of hip and knee implants across Canada, um, in most regions in Canada, each individual hospital or healthcare region has a contract with the hip and knee implant manufacturers and the prices that they pay for their hip and knee implants varies from hospital to hospital or region to region. And because of confidentiality agreements, there's no ability to compare or share cost information. So what one hospital pays for a hip and knee implant may be very different from what a second hospital pays just down the street. And that lack of transparency makes it very difficult uh, to secure appropriate funding, uh, appropriate costing of hip and knee implants. And that needs to change as well. I really think that if, if we're going to continue doing as many hip and knee implants as we are, which the demand is forecast to increase, uh, we really need to start looking at uh, doing a better job of, of tracking the implants and the outcomes, uh, of feeding information back both on the nature of the implant performance but on surgical technique and patient outcomes, feeding that back to 
to hospital regions, to surgeons, and to hospitals. And when we do that, we will see continued improvement in the outcome of surgery.